I'd like for you to check out another one of those uh, powerful videos of one of those people who ex experienced uh, that well, God gave them a supernatural experience to see uh, what happens to people who do who leave this leave this life without the Lord Jesus in their heart. And so uh, I want you to watch this particular video and then I'll uh, come back and we'll and then I'll uh, we'll get my, <laughs> I'll hand it over to my wife so that she can lead you guys in our prayer session for today. Uh, in Acts two seventeen, the scripture says that it'll come to pass afterwards. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. Saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. And this dream that I had, uh, I dreamed I was just walking down the street and walking down a sidewalk. And as I was walking down the sidewalk, I noticed that everything was a gray color. The sidewalk, the grass, the trees, the sky. It looked like somebody had taken a can of that gray spray primer and just primed the whole world. Everything was just a gray color. I just And I just kept walking down the street and noticing things like there's no wind in the trees. I'd seen no one anywhere. Just like everything was just dead still and calm. And as I was walking on down the sidewalk, I noticed that the sidewalk had a, a left-hand turn. And when I looked to the left, to where the sidewalk was going, I noticed a house that was, looked like it had been built back in the 70s. And when I laid eyes upon the house, the Lord, I heard him speak to me and say, go on in. So I did. I walked on up to the porch and opened the door and walked on in. And when I opened the door and walked in, the Lord said, go in and look around. And when I was, as I was looking around, I noticed the color of the floor, the carpet, the walls, the cabinets, the kitchen, everything in the whole house was this gray color. It just had a feeling of blah. Everything was just, there was no life in anything. Everything was just gray and just, it just undescribably just didn't have a right feeling about anything. And the Lord just told me, go on through and look around this house. So I did. And I, as I looked on through the house, and around, I came to the last door, somewhere I hadn't been yet. And this is the last door of the place. And the Lord told me, he said, go in that door. And as I placed my hand on the doorknob, I noticed that I had a feeling that I wasn't going to know what to expect when I walked through. But when I walked on through the door and I looked, the first thing I noticed was the floor. The floor was black. It was the blackest black that you could even imagine in your mind. It was it was just so black that you could actually feel the blackness of it. And I walked on in to the room, and as I walked on in, uh, the next thing I saw really got me because in the middle of the room was a big hole in the floor. It was about eight foot across. And as I looked towards this hole and seen it, I could see it glowing. It was glowing red, and it was just... I could tell what was going on in the hole because I could hear screams, screams, male and female. Just, it's hard to put in human words the feeling of the, the screams that I heard because it was just like pain, agony, and torture and suffering just all wrapped up into one. Just, it was just horrible. And as I looked up on the hole, I noticed it was just shimmering. It's like when you're going down the highway in the summertime, in a distance, you can see the heat coming up off the highway, it looked like the heat was just coming up off of the hole. Oh, uh, and it just, my heart, it's just hard to put in human words, but it just, I could just feel what was going on inside the hole. And as I was looking at it and hearing those voices scream, the Lord, I heard him speak to me. And he said, go on over and look in the hole. And I knew I had to be the obedient. I didn't want to, you know, I really didn't, feel like I wanted to do it, but I knew I had to obey the voice of the Lord. So I stepped on over to the hole, and I st stood right up to the edge of the hole, and I looked down in it. And the next thing I saw, you've everybody's used a barbecue grill and charcoal. And the, you know, the next thing I noticed looking down in this hole, the whole thing was just lined. A little like charcoal glowing, and just the heat. you could I could just see it radiating off the sides. And as I looked down the hole, I seen 
There's two souls falling into hell. And my heart just sank because I knew they was beyond hope. I knew that there was nothing that I could do to save them. And they was screaming and twisting just in agony and torture. And they, as they was falling, I could tell they was just becoming disfigured because the heat was hitting them from all sides. And the color of them was gray, just like the world outside, just like inside the house. The color was gray. It was just like there were, somebody had painted them the same color as everything else. And then I seen them falling on down as I was watching them fall. I had my arms to my side and I was standing there in shock. And as I looked down, something come up behind me and grabbed me, wrapped its arms around me and started pulling me away from a hole. And I thought, what in the world has got a hold of me? I, it was just pulling me back away from a hole. And I noticed as I looked down to see what I had a hold of me, it's something that had gray arms, the same color as everything else. And I thought, what in the world? So I turned and looked over my left shoulder, and when I did, I noticed it looked like an, an old leathery-faced man that had a hold of me, and he was dragging me away from a hole. I couldn't actually hear any words coming out of his mouth, but I heard his thoughts, and his thoughts was, I'm going to drag you away from this hole. And I'm going to stick you in this closet over here because I don't want you to see what's going on. You know, I don't want you to be able to tell people what you've seen here. So I'm going to put you in this closet where you can keep your mouth shut and nobody will know. And as he's dragging me on over, I just felt the spirit of the Lord come up on me. And he was trying to get me in the closet. And I said, I don't think so. I just pulled my arms up away from his arms and got his arms unbound for me. And uh, as i done that... I just got a hold of him like a rag doll, lifted him up above my head and stepped back over to the hole and said, in Jesus' name, and I threw him down into the hole. And as I was standing there watching him fall and scream, he was just started disintegrating like he just melted. You could just see the heat, what it, what it done to him. And as I stand there watching him fall down in there, there's a scripture in Second Peter 3, 9 that I need to quote. It says, God is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And as I stand there watching this, I felt something coming. As he was going down, something was coming up out of the hole. I couldn't see it, but I could feel it. And, I, and as it came on up, it was a voice, and it was God's voice coming up out of the hole. And what he said was, as he first said it, it was like real stern and rough, and he was very adamant in his words. And it's like, I'm not willing that any should perish, but everybody would get to know me. When he said that the last part of that sentence, it just, it's like the words just tapered off into love. And as he said this, the power of his voice was so strong, it knocked me back away from the hole. And when it did, I noticed standing on the other side of the hole was a co-worker of mine. And we just looked at each other and smiled, and we walked away from the hole. So when I woke up, I was just freaking out because I, you know, never experienced anything like this with the Lord. And God just started speaking to me. And when he started speaking to me, it's just like a normal conversation. And he, he started saying to me, Mike, you know, I'm not willing that anybody go to this pit. That's what the Lord called it, a pit. He said, I just want people to get to know me. And the, I can't put in human words what the voice of the Lord was like, but it was just like liquid love. He had so much compassion and love in his voice that he, he just, it was his will so strongly that he didn't want anybody to go to the pit. It was just very awesome. And God spoke to me and said, Mike, I want you to tell the sinners that there's a hole in the floor, and it's not my will that they go there into that pit. That's what the Lord called it, the pit. And you tell the Christians to quit letting the devil shove them in the closet and keeping their mouth shut and start witnessing the people and to warn them that there is a hole in the floor. And I said, okay, Lord, I will. And today, if you're can hear the sound of my voice, I'm begging and pleading with you. There is a pit, and it's not the will of the Lord for you to go there. 
just admit you're a sinner. Hey, believe in you, Christ, that he died for you. See, and just say, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. And that's just simple. It's not complicated. God wants you to be in heaven with it forever with him. And if you're a Christian and you can hear the sound of my voice today, it's time that you come out of the closet Quit letting the devil shove you in there and keep your mouth shut. There's all kinds of things in the world that's coming out of the closet today. And we need to stand up for Jesus and do his will. And part of his will is that we spread the word. It's not God's will for anybody to go to hell. And also I want you to know that God has told me several times that time is almost over and time is short. And we don't have much time left over in the world. And thank you for listening to me today. I appreciate your time. And I pray that you become not just a hearer of the word, but a doer. Thank you.